that notice God didn't say anything about the parents' condition. Jesus didn't stop, stop and say, uh, uh, baby, are you saved? Are y'all married? <laughs> Do y'all go to church? Do y'all belong to the lighthouse? Jesus didn't ask none of those questions. In fact, he didn't even, he didn't say nothing to the parent other than, hey, y'all come on, back, bring them babies over here. Right? Here Jesus elevated the importance of of blessing his children. One reason is because obviously he understands the power of it, but he would bless himself. When he was at the temple, Simeon listened up him up to God and blessed them. Jesus said, let me get my hands on, let me put something on these children because see, I don't know which way they're going to go, but, but when people say, well, baby dedication saved you. No, they're already saved until they come to the age of accountability. Well, they cannot, I reject Jesus. Other than that, them baby, them baby's fine. They're more connected to God. <laughs> they're more connected to God than we are. They hear him. Sometimes the baby be playing, and all of a sudden they'll be like, oh. <laughs> There it is right there. What'd you see, baby? They can't even articulate it. God just touched them. I believe that. You say what you want to say. I believe it. They wake up in the middle of the night looking around. They see them angels. <laughs> Sometimes we think they're being stubborn. We say, baby, come over here. They just look at you. There's an angel. They, they look at the angel. Somebody say, no, they ain't. They just being stubborn. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to help them out. <laughs> I'm trying to help them out. But, um, but anyway, I, I, okay. So, so Jesus didn't he, didn't, he didn't put any condition on the parents. The parents were the non-factor other than they had the baby. And that's the other point, too. God said, it's, he said, now we're going to bless the baby. We're going to applaud the parents for bringing the baby here. They could have stamped out the baby's life, but they chose not to. So every parent needs to be applauded for allowing that baby to come into this world. And then the final thing, well, not the final thing, but God said, uh, you didn't come, you, you didn't come, look at you. You didn't, your situation, you wasn't all, hey, <laughs> look at you. You were born in adultery, single family. You know, you didn't know who your daddy was. You, I think you turned out okay. Talking about me. A lot of times we want to put people in category and then put curses on them. Oh, they don't have a dad, they ain't going to be, that ain't true. Okay, this is my abbreviated message on that. I can't wait to get to heaven and see who, who, who shielded me and prayed for me until I crossed over. Somebody did. It might have been grandma friendly. I don't know. I only knew her for like a hot minute, but I don't know what she prayed before she left this planet. But nobody just walks into the kingdom of God. Somebody got to do some interference, some warfare, and call your name before Jesus. Amen. <laughs> so, so, so that's why that was that's the abbreviated thing of why I'm doing this this way. Now, I want you to, um, I want you to go to. Uh, okay, no, let's stay right there. Stay right there. Verse 16. Then he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on their heads, and did what? Bless and blessed them. Now this was not some spontaneous, this Jesus, this was not some spontaneous outburst of affection. This wasn't Jesus saying, ah, uh, come, come here, boo-boo. Come on up to Uncle Jay. Come on, you know, everybody's uncle when he's talking to the baby. No, this was not some spontaneous thing. This was a, a cap, not calculated, I guess calculated, but this, Jesus understood the power, the power of blessing children. And then, again, I'm going to cross this over to all of us. It's not just limited to baby. Now, let's look at this. What is the blessing? Man, I want you to pay attention really good. First of all, blessing is not a thing. 
What is the blessing? It's not a thing. You know, we say, oh, man, that house, that house is a blessing. Or that, that job is a blessing. Well, that's not what we're talking about. The blessing is an empowerment from God to, to do well. To, it's an empowerment uh, of strength. It's a divine spiritual empowerment. It produces things. But that's not the thing. Y'all heard, I mean, heard the story about the, the egg and the golden goose. Or the, the golden, no, the, the goose wasn't golden, was it? The golden egg and the goose. And most folks are like, oh, give me that egg. Thank you, Jesus. No, I want the goose. Why? Because the goose could keep on producing. That's what this blessing is. And, and in Genesis, the original blessing, that's why God said he, he created them and then he did what? Blessed them. Why? He said, no, I'm going to empower you now and surround you with, with my power, with my presence, with my peace, with, with the ability to, to acquire, with the ability to dominate every intruder that's trying to steal your life and trying to come into your home. I'm going to empower you to dominate that. That's, part, that's all, all this is part of the blessing. That's what he put in, that's what Jesus said, I'm going to put on these children from the very beginning. Mm. Yeah. That's what the blessing is, ability, empowerment, peace, wisdom, unexplainable occurrences, restoration. But we got to make faith with it. I said, we got to make faith. If, you know, the, the, the baby that, that's being blessed today, if they're parent, now I'm, I mean, that we said we, gonna, we would do if the parent want it, if they want it, if they want to know how to raise a child in God and dedicate themselves to do that, that'd be a whole, that's a whole different, whole different thing. We come to you, we will come to your house and sit down with you and go through it and get a commitment. From, well, no, we wouldn't get a commitment before we come, but we'll show you how to walk it out. You can't just do that with a prayer. So. But if you stay in faith with what you speak over your child, mix it with faith, God's word will come to pass. And there is nothing on this planet that can stop. If you mix it with faith and, 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 and walk in this thing, you create a supernatural flow all the days of your life. And there ain't nothing that can stop it. That's what was on Abraham. Even Abraham wasn't even perfect. He was messing up, lying. Y'all yeah, remember? He lied twice. This was kind of blessed. This is, this, is, this is the other side of the blessing. <laughs> First time he lied because they didn't want his wife. His wife was so fine that the guy like, I want her. And Abraham didn't fight for her because he was scared they were going to kill him. So he said, yeah, go ahead. And then God had to deal with the boy that wanted her. But she was 70 then. Oh, oh, and then, and, and we're talking about this blessing. See, this blessing will preserve you. Look how good everything looks. See, this blessing will, will, will sustain you. And then, and then homegirl, Sarah, turned, the same thing happened again, and Sarah was 90. Look, I don't care what age you in. I don't care what uh, uh, dispensation you in. 90 is old. But they wanted that dude like, that, that woman right there. At 90. Now, two, two things to that. First of all, the blessing of God was on Sarah. Because we know they started producing too. Abraham kept producing. Anyway. Yeah. So, so that's part of the blessing. We don't have to, we're going to get older, but we don't have to grow old. He said, with long life will I what? Satisfy you. And then he said, even in, in your old days, you'll still be fruitful and producing. That's the blessing of God. The blessing of God does that. You don't have to have all these aches and pains and, and cursing yourself. Talk about, oh my God, don't do that. I'm, I'm going to show you. Come on, God. Praise the Lord. Okay, if I get excited, just bear with me, okay? So, so when we start this blessing... It, on this child, and, and, and you got it, there's a supernatural flow that cannot be stopped. The only thing that can stop the blessing, what's the? You. Your unbelief will shut that thing off. Your unbelief will deactivate it. Your faith will activate it. 
So I want you to, I want you to remember that. Okay. Now, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, please. Woo! Now, um, you know, in the Jewish community, in Eastern, Eastern cultures, this was, this, this, this is what they do. They did it then, they still do it. If you, if you would, you know, find yourself in the home of an Orthodox Jewish person, whether here or in Israel, wherever they live, you would, you, and, and you went to their home on Friday, you know what they do on Friday? They have what they call Shabbat. And that's where, that's what, see, some stuff, I know that's Old Testament, but some stuff we need to be doing. Because what they would do is, they would take, they would just rest. No screens in their face. No work. They would just rest. And they would have a family meal. And we're just going to rest and enjoy each other and the favor and the blessing of God. And what they would do is, they would have a, they would have a meal. They would have a meal. And then after the meal, the father, I said they had son and daughter. The father would, would get his son, pull him next to him. And he would begin to bless the sons, like we're going to do today. He would bless them. And then after he was done, mother would grab the daughter, and then she would bless the daughters. Yeah, she would, they would just be blessing them. Now, they did this every week. It wasn't just once a year. And then after, after they're blessing the children, then, then the dad would lay his hands on his wife and bless her. According to Proverbs 31, just bless her. And then when, when, when he's done blessing wife, wifey will come over here and lay her hand on him and bless her husband. And so that's, that's several, depending on how many children, there's several blessings. You, you walk in there, all you hear is blessedness, blessedness. You didn't hear, God, dog, what the, hey. You didn't hear none of that. Now I'm going to talk, I think I'm going to talk about that because, see, and people, we, and we, I know you don't, you don't mean this, but sometimes we laugh because, but we're actually, we're cursing. We're cursing people. We're cursing our children. We're cursing our spouses. We're cursing. I don't curse. I don't use four letters. I ain't talking about four letter words. I'm talking about cursing. Putting something on them. But anyway, so that's what they would do. And they would have a meal and they would rest. You know, we need to, man, what would happen in every family would say, listen, okay. Turn the phone on, unplug, uh, turn on, don't put them on vibrate, turn them off. Turn them off. Turn off the, okay. How many of y'all got that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Turn, turn, turn on, turn off everything. And just, we'll sit down and just, we're going to hear each other's conversation. What kind of tradition, what would that, what would happen in a household? And all you're hearing is blessing. Now, everybody's hearing it. And then the children are growing up with, I know I'm good. My daddy blessed me. I know I'm good. My mama blessed me. And there was specific blessing. So anyway, that's, that's what they did. That's, that's, what, that's what they did. We were at a function last year, and there was a, um, a Jewish speaker there. Um, and he talked about how, how they still do. He said, yep, all the family come over. We have a meal on Friday. Just enjoy one another. And we bless. Just bless our family. Bless one another. How cool is that? Hey, hey, y'all, let's start. What do you think we start something like that? Okay, y'all nod like y'all serious. It, that show is better than sitting on a child, he builds. I don't know what we're going to do. That's, <laughs> how are we going to pay this? You know, all that's still there, but you, you know, well, okay. All right. Now, you know, uh, isn't any wonder that the Jewish, what, the, what are the Jewish people known for? Yes. Prosperity. They, they make up 1% of a whole population. But it's, it's ironic, they got 15% of all the Nobel Peace Prize. They're the top, te I didn't know that until we went over there. We went over there and we found out they're like the leaders in technology. If you would look up don't, don't look it up while I'm preaching. But if you look up um, Jewish technology leaders, you'll find out. Now, now, a lot of them live in America, but they're Jews. Leading all these companies. A couple of them, I, wow, I didn't know that. 
That's not by happenstance. They understand when I go into this, there's some on me. I have an advantage. All their life they've been hearing how blessed they were. Okay, now, I want to I wanna put this in here. Hebrew chapter 11. Let's look at the Amplified Bible. Is this interesting so far? Yes, yeah. Okay, in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 20, it says, with eyes of faith. With what? Eyes okay, now let's stop right there because now this won't work if I don't believe it. I want to keep hammering that. It won't work if I don't believe it. So with eyes of faith, Isaac, Watch this. Looking far into the future, invoke blessings upon Jacob and Esau, his sons. Looking far into what? The future. He did what? Invoked blessing. Verse 21. Prompted by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and bowed in prayer over the top of his staff. Now, you see what the, 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 the parent, grandparents were doing? they like, I'm about to get out of here. I'm going to put one, one more blessing on my children, on my grandchildren. But here's the part I like. Looking, it said, looking far into the future. Parents, you both say what? Yes. Or yes. yes. That's what we teach our little man to say. And say what? We don't, we don't do what right here. We don't do what? Yes, yes, sir. But parents, you, grandparent, you have the ability to look. God has given us a gift. Boy, don't get me started, but get me started. God has given us a gift to look into the future of our children. And if their parents are acting crazy, the grandparent can look into the future. Watch this. And speak. Invoke blessings in their lives to carry them, prepare them, and equip them for what they're going to have to deal with in the days to come. Amen. They don't know, you don't even know it all, but God will give you word to, to invoke into their life, to impart into their lives, that they won't be able to get away from it. I don't care what comes at them. We can go into their future with this blessing and we can shape some things. We can shape some things. We can speak some things. We can establish some things into their future. Jacob, bring my grandbabies here. Joseph, Joseph, Jacob, one of them. Bring my, come here, boy, come here. Sit them boys down. Sit down. Yeah, daddy. Receive this. I know this is Jewish culture, but this is Bible culture. Amen. You got to bless your children. Amen. You got to God is calling on you. Now, now we do the church, but, but even after the day, um, uh, that's something that needs to go on all the time. Quit cursing them. I don't curse my kids. Child, you make me sick. You're going you're gonna to end up, you're cursing them. That's a curse. How stupid can you be and keep breathing, huh? <laughs> or, or can I can I just talk? Y'all sure? Sometimes you ain't even talking to them. They hear you on the phone or in traffic, giving signs. One hand, one finger signs. They're seeing that they're taking that in, cursing them. It's a curse. We think curses, you know, bewitch and all that. No. We can shape something in them. 
half of what they learn, they learn from us. They ain't got nothing to do with, when they're little, they ain't got nothing else to do. Sit around and study you. <laughs> you ever, yeah, I, I'm not saying it again now. I'm like, God, dog, okay. Everything. He won't, yeah, everything. They ain't got nothing but study you and do it. You're shaping their world. Some people won't give account to God. You made him like that. You made her like that. It ain't the devil. Well, if the devil, you know, got somebody to cooperate. Okay, let me keep going. Okay. So, so we invoke that. So when the Bible even says a good man leaves what? An inheritance for you? He's not just talking about an insurance policy. That too, need leave, leave them some in so they don't be choking in debt. But we're talking about establishing a spiritual inheritance. We're, we're building that inheritance. Just like you make deposits, you know, into the, the, the education fund every month, you make deposits into their heart. Build that inheritance. Glory to God. Okay. Now, I want you to go to Genesis chapter uh, 49. Just, or you can just follow me on the screen because I need to get going. Now, and this is amazing, but, and I think we're going to get into it, but there were blessings for the girls and blessings for the boys individually, and we, we see this in Scripture. We won't see it today. But in Genesis 49:28 in the NIV, it says, All these are the 12 tribes of Israel, and this is what their father said to them when he blessed them. Watch this. Giving each the blessing, what? appropriate to him Woo! see every child is different right Amen. and every every destiny is different and so and so so we, we see here that the father understood that and he he was aware of their life and aware of the track God put them on or on the track that they were trying to go and he would he would, he didn't bless them all the same in other words he he monitored their lives Oh, Lord Jesus. He monitored it like he was well aware of their tendencies and their bents. And he would speak blessing, specific blessing that were appropriate for each particular child. Isn't that good? Yeah. It wasn't a one size fit all. So the parent was engaged in like, okay, this is, this is, boo boo gets this, but bam bam gets this. And that's why the, the girls had a different, ble one blessing, and the guys had another blessing, the boys. That's the way they did it. So, so we want to, Lord, show me how. That's why, that's why, man, if you're going to raise kids, right, you got to, you got to know God. Yeah, right. Anyway, <laughs> so, so it, it, it's powerful. It's powerful. Now, you, some of y'all say, well, Pastor God, dog, I, 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 I didn't know all this when I was. It ain't too late. In fact, um, Jacob blessed his children. I mean, they were old, way old. He said, you know, cause remember Joseph was gone for all them years, and he got he put that blessing on. He pulled that thing on them. He 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 spit that thing out as much as he could before he left. It's never too old. They still your they'll always be your children. And my mom used to say, "That's like hey, that's somebody's baby. That's still somebody's baby. I don't care how old and rusty he is. That's somebody's baby." <laughs> <laughs> now let's look at I want to take go to Luke 24 quick um, I want to show you this is just this is, when you go through the Bible it's amazing what happens here but here's Jesus uh, um, uh, going to heaven and Luke 24 50 and he led them out as far as Bethany and he lifted up his hands and did what Bless. blessed them this is the disciples now as it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. So Jesus understood too. Listen, I, I'm about to leave here. The last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bless y'all. Brother Jim, we need to be so conscious of what we can do for our family, for our children in terms of, yeah, we'll leave them a little change, but, but the blessing will make it all good. Yeah. Because you leave them some money and they don't have the blessing on them, that, that won't last very long. In fact, it might hurt them. <laughs> it might hurt them. They're not ready for it. Okay. Now, I want you to go to James chapter 3. How are we doing? 
Okay. I want you to, I want to, these scriptures are going to mean something now. James chapter 3, verse 10, it says, Out of the same mouth proceeds, and what else? Cursing. Blessing and cursing. And he said, My brothers, these things ought not to be so. You know, we curse people. We curse people when we say stuff like, man, they ain't going to never make it. They just, they just, they ain't going to never make it. You just curse them. I know none of no one here says that about folks. But in case you hear somebody else say that, tell them to quit cursing them. You're going to die young. You're going to have liver cancer just like you're sorry. Quit cursing them. Now, yeah, okay. A curse can't work against you <laughs> when you stop it. If you don't stop it, it'll work. And here's what I mean. Like, you know, I got folks always got something to say about us. You know, they just, that's what, that's what happens when you in the front. But, if I would be so worried about what folks said, keep rehearsing, I don't want them that, and start believing, now that thing will work. But can't no curse work against me. Because one of the things, I'm so busy every day blessing myself. If nobody else blessed me, I'm blessed. By the time I leave the house, I'm jazzed. <laughs> By the time I get out of public, I'm good. I love me some Ken Friend of his blessed self. I'm blessed. Because the scripture said, see, you know, in, in Deuteronomy 28, just the first, first 14 verses is about blessing. Now, people say, why well, that old covenant? I know, young man. I was going to say something else, but I'm watching my words now. <laughs> but see, just because, see, everything that was good in the old covenant is still coming on us. What, what stopped in the old covenant is the curses. Jesus took all them curses. So when it said blessed coming out, blessed going in, that's still good. Amen. So I bless myself. I'm, ble I'm blessed when I came in here. I'll be blessed when I go. He said he'll bless my storehouse. He'll bless my basket. He'll bless the fruit of my body. He'll bless, he'll bless my, my fish. All I got is fish now. He'll bless my fish, my animal, your animal. He'll bless your job. He'll bless your business. All of that. All of that is on you and you got to reinforce it all the time so when when there's a recession or re economy circumstances come to make you throw your head back you're like oh wait 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 i'm blessed Amen. and you got to know that and you got to walk in that and you got to believe that no matter what's going on okay okay i knew i shouldn't probably try to do all this go to roman chapter 12. so quit letting so so Quit letting curses come out of your mouth. He said, out of your mouth come blessing and curses. I can choose. Now look at this one, Romans 12, 14. For folks messing with you, he said, do what? Bless those who persecute you. Bless and what? So curses shouldn't be coming out of, well, curses shouldn't be coming out of our mouth for people. Papa said, uh, out of the mouth come, uh, no, life and death and the power of the tongue. So there's a time you do speak death. Can I kill you? Let's say you got some sickness in your body. Speak death to that. Virus, I kill you in the name of Jesus. And then you turn around and speak blessing. I speak life. Uh, 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 lungs, I speak life to you. I speak life to you. I bless you with life. Y'all remember when Jesus spoke to the wind? He said, peace. What, what did he say? He said, peace. What else? Peace. What, didn't peace steal it? This is why I get paid the big bucks. <laughs> uh, 
not only, I just learned this, not only do you curse or kill, let's say, let's say okay, the virus in the lung, not only do you curse and kill it, but then, see, he said, peace to the storm, right? That's what caused everything. And then he said, be still. So he stopped the storm, but then the effects of the storm he spoke to, too. Sometimes there's an illness in your body, you kill it, and then you speak restoration to the damage that it caused. That's good. That's good. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, 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 you know, you know, uh, I know we, a young man that uh, had brain cancer, I, just, I thought about him this morning, and uh, he had brain cancer, all the cancer's gone, but the tumor's still there. So now we need to, we need to, we got the cancer out, but now we got to go back and take the effects of that cancer. Man, I'm like, okay. I remember I had, a, I got one ankle bigger than another one, because, because I took the cast off my foot before with time. I like, I ain't wearing, I got, you know, back then they had the more itchy casts and big old thing. You couldn't, you know, it was messing up my pimp walk, man. I was messing up my walk. I had to come up out that cast. I'm just playing. But now, now I got one ankle bigger than the other one because it didn't heal right. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to give me some restoration. Make this mug the same size. Okay, did we read? Yeah, we read 14. Let's read again. Bless those who persecute you and bless and do not what? Curse. Now, the reason why he told us to bless is because we can. And the reason he told us, the reason he told us not to curse is because we can. Now, I wanted to take you through this. I don't think I, I have the time. But um, I want to. Let's see. I'll take you through this one. Y'all remember when, um, y'all remember when Jacob tricked Isaac into blessing him? Okay. It's in Genesis 27. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Jacob, was, he, he couldn't see anymore. And so Rebecca, the mom, she favored this one child. And she was behind all of that. But anyway, she got him to go in and, and get the blessing. Esau should have gotten it because he was the oldest. But Jacob stole it. Now, I want you to think about this. Now, I know this, that was the Eastern culture then. But I want you to think about it. Esau, when Esau realized that Jacob had got, I'm really shortening the story. When Esau realized that uh, Jacob had gotten the blessing, he almost lost his mind. Yeah. He almost lost his mind. And he came, he wailing, Dad, do you, don't you have another one? He said, no, man, I gave it to your boy. You got to serve him. Ah! Oh! And the Bible said he, was, he could not find any peace until he figured out he was going to kill his brother for stealing that blessing. That's how important. We're just talking about Word. We're not talking about a you know, million dollar insurance policy. We're talking about it was so powerful and they believed in it so much that, that th this boy almost lost his mind that his brother thought, and he's going to kill his brother. I'm killing I'm kill you out of here. As soon as I get you out from cause, And the mama wanted him to have it so bad, the mama said, listen, 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 go, go do this, Jacob, and whatever curse come on, I'll bear the curse. That's how bad she wanted that boy to have it. And he, Esau went through life for a while, just bitter, broken, all because of this blessing. He wanted the, that's how powerful that blessing was. And that's how powerful it is now. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 that um, we've been redeemed from the curse that the blessing of Abraham. Same thing. Go back and study Abraham's life. Go back and look at all of that. I, I did this when, when I was in school. And I, I studied. I, I, I said, I'll go back now. Because everything Abraham got is mine. And it, it wasn't the thing that he had. I don't want Abraham's cattle. 
They're about 4,000 old, 4,000 years old now. But it was the power, it was the favor. Abraham prayed for a king and his whole family. They all got healed because that blessing was on. Abraham went out to war untrained. He just took folk from the house. And took out an army. Why? The blessing was on him. Yes. He was the richest man in the county. Why? The blessing was on him. Y'all remember he took a lot with him, and 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 there was there's some strife started. Wherever there's strife, there's confusion and every evil work. Abraham said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, no, no, you you're trying to mess with the blessing." And so he told he told Lot. He said, "Pick what you want." Now, how many of you? How many of you was like, like, okay, what what do you want? You just pick what you want. Go ahead. You know why he can do that? You know why he can do that. See, when you gosh, when you got the blessing on you, you're not, you're not comparing with nobody because you know you can get whatever you need to get. Take it all away, it got to come back. When you got the blessing on you, you're confident. You don't play game. You don't play, you're not in a comparison thing. You're not jealous. You're not envy. This blessing will take you over the top. Oh. All right. Now, okay, let me do this. Go to, go to Numbers 22, please. Now, the Jewish people in the Eastern culture, they believe that that blessing carried great power in it, and the words took on a life of their own. And so I want to encourage you today, and I think I'm going I'm, I'm to hit this again Wednesday. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> it's so much. Dig in that word and find out what God says about you. Because that's, that's, when he said no place shall come now your dwelling, that's part of your blessing. When he said a thousand shall fall at your right hand and a thousand at your left hand, five, five, however many fall at your right hand, that's part of your blessing. But it shall not come near you. That's part of your blessing. I will be a shield to you. That's part of your blessing. You got to believe it. You got to open up your mouth, man. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay, now, here's, here's um, I want to give you this story. This is where Balak um, hired Balaam to curse the Israel army. Now, <laughs> <laughs> and this is this is amazing in itself. Balak said, "Listen, let's go hire the, the man of God." A Balaam was a man of God, a real man of God, and, until he got off a little bit. But he was known. <laughs> Balak was known for if he says it, it's gonna happen. That was his rep. How would you like to have a reputation of you get you get uh, Dr. Brenda to say it to speak over your contract? You got it. Go open up your account. If you can get Prince to speak over that destruction, go get the party hats and the food because it's gonna be done. What if, what if you can go to your job? Oh well, you well you got you got a job. You got a full time job. Was Fred and Nim and G? Ever <laughs> Fred Nim, G. <laughs> but but what those of you those of us who have were employed outside of the home? What if you walk up in your department, your, your place, and say, "Hey, boss, this time next year, we're gonna be in the black, like you ain't never seen." What if we had a reputation? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for that. I'm, 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 I'm stretching for that. I want a reputation when they're like, look, don't let Friendly say it. Right. Actually, homegirl does that. She normally only does it when I say stuff that ain't, you know, consistent with the word. She said, you need to stop all that because your word is too powerful. That's what she tells me. She's right. I mean, one time, hey, amen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, no, but see, we got to start, we got to, listen, y'all, we got to retrain ourselves. We got to retrain ourselves. So, Pastor used to teach this way back in the 90s. I know I need to bring it back, but I got a whole nother level on it now. 
I mean, I, I never stop. My children, I speak blessing over them. I don't lay hands on them all the time like I used to. I think I'm going to get back. I think we're going to do that Friday night thing. Fry us some fish. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't that how they do? Eat some fish. Ah, deep fry some. Anyway, <laughs> that ain't a blessing. I don't think. But um, uh, but no, no um. So so Balak was known that if you can get Balak to do it, it's done. So that just that alone is powerful. Cause he was talking about the children of Israel had come out of Egypt, and he the Balak he said, oh man, they're gonna take over. They're gonna take over, and and cause I heard about all this stuff. They they just they just uh, obliterate all the armies. Isn't it amazing? He didn't call Boeing and order some more fighter jets. He didn't go to Smith and Wesson and order some more bang bangs. He went and got the man of God. Said, I need you to curse them. Brenda, you know, y'all had them games in them schools. What did Brenda Stevens just say? Hey, Prince. Principal, I don't know what y'all call him. The principal. Um, I have a solution for this game problem. What is it, Brenda? You're not Brenda is. <laughs> I got a solution for this game problem. I'm going to curse everything that's driving that, funding that, instigating that. Now, we got some budget problems in the school. We can save on some of them cops <laughs> and some of these programs. I'm going to curse them. Give me about four weeks before you see the difference. I ain't going to take that long. I'm going to curse them when I go back to my office. What if we were so bold, y'all? What if we got this thing so... I'm, 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 I'm reaching for that. I'm reaching for that. We got authority and power. Okay, let me move on real quick. Um, um, so anyway, so Balak hired Balaam to curse the armies of Israel. <laughs> now look at verse uh, number 22:25. My God. 22:5. He sent a messenger to Balaam, the son of Bero at Pethor, which is near the river in the land of the sons of the people, to call him saying, look, a people has come from Egypt. See, they cover the face of the earth and are settling next to me. He didn't like that. Verse 6, therefore, please come at once. Curse this people for me, for they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them. I'll be able to defeat them if you'll curse them. That's what he's saying. I'll be able to defeat them, drive them out of the land. For I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and he whom you curse is what? Wow. <laughs> okay. Now, so, so Balaam went to the Lord. Now, look, the Balaam told him, he said, listen, I hear what you're saying, but whatever God tells me, that's what I'm going to say. I'm not going to say that just because you want me to. I'm going to say what God wants me to do. Look at verse 20. He said, that night God came to Balaam and said, since these men have come to you, summon you, go with them, but do only what I tell you. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, 23, go to 23, 8. <laughs> well, let me give you. Balaam, excuse me, Balak had took Balaam up to the mountain to see all these people. <laughs> Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. Anyway, verse 8, 23, 8. He said, how shall I curse whom God has not cursed? This is after he went up there and saw the people, and he spoke. How can I curse whom God has not cursed? And how shall I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced? <laughs> he said, I, I can't do it. Now, look at verse 11. Then Balaam said to Balaam, what have you done to me? Because Balaam said what God said, and God blessed them. Every time Balak wanted to the curse, God blessed him through Balaam. And then Balaam said, what have you done to me? I took you to curse my enemies. And look, you have blessed them bountifully. He said, I told you I'm going to say whatever God tell me to say. <laughs> so Balaam said, okay, let's try it again. Let's try it again. <laughs> let's try it again. So look at verse 13. 
Then Bala said to him, please come with me to another place from which you may see them. He's trying to get another angle now. You shall see only the outer parts of them. You're not going to see all of them. So maybe you saw all of them and kind of intimidated you. <laughs> and <laughs> the outer parts of them and shall not see them all. Curse them for me from right there. Now, Balak repeated it three times to get all these angles. Pause, because this is, this is symbolic to me. The devil is looking at every angle to take you out. He said, if this one don't work, let's try this one. If this one don't work, let's try this one. And he, he's relentless until you drive him out. Okay, look at verse, uh, uh, verse 19, 23, 19. And here's what Balaam said. After three times, he took him to places, and Balaam still just spoke what God told him to speak. Now here Balaam said, listen, now, this is it, man. Here, here we go. This is it. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not make it good or do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Behold, I have received the command to bless. He has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I don't care what comes at us. When we stand and receive and, and out of our mouth release the blessing of God over our lives, over our children, over our occupation, over, over our destiny, over uh, whatever it is, whatever, whatever, whatever it is, when you release the blessing of God, nothing. What did he just say? Nothing. No thing can reverse it. God said, you the head and not the tail. Can't nothing reverse that. He said, you're blessed coming in, blessed going out. Nothing can reverse that. He said, I will bless the works of your hand. Nothing can reverse that. That's spoken over you. Ephesians 1, 3 said, we've been blessed with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Every blessing is spiritual, and it's up to us. When we believe it and receive it, it comes into manifestation in the physical. My child is blessed. Can't nothing reverse that. All the days of his life, all the days of her life, they're blessed of God. I don't care what circumstance. I'm not going to say anything else just because the circumstance changes. That does not reverse the blessing. Teach, Are you listening to me? Yes, and so we have to get on our mouth. We have to, we have to get it in us. Now, we've got to believe this. I've got to keep saying that. When we mix faith with it, that's when we see it Amen. work. When we mix what? Faith with it. And so we got we to gotta train ourselves to speak only blessing, to speak only life. God is not a man. And when we speak his word, which is his life, so we're speaking his blessing, it's got to happen. I said it's got to happen. Speak, get in the habit, speak to your body, speak life to your body. Why are you taking your medication? Speak life. This, this, <laughs> you ain't going to be around here long. Speak life to your life. Yeah, your kid may be going in, may be in the, uh, the, uh, the uh, 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 what's that thing Tommy used to work at? McLaughlin. Your child may be at McLaughlin. And, and, and yeah, that, you speak life. Every time you go see him, speak life to him. Thank you, Jesus. Walk into your business. You, may, you don't know. This may be, they saying this may be the last week you, the doors open. You speak life to him. You live and not die. The works of my hands are blessed. Listen, you got, I got blessed hands in this place. Computer, you blessed. Yeah, yeah, calendar, you blessed. Everything blessed. And you just be, you get in the habit of speaking life to it. I, I would tell y'all something I, I thought of speaking life to, but I'm, I'm, I ain't going to do it. Y'all be like, okay, friend, it lost his mind. <laughs> okay, now, I want to... Um, I want to get ready to bless the baby. And I want to, the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to read, I'm going to read 
the blessing and then I'm going to um, speak. I think I want to do it that way. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And uh, I understand we have one in this service. Unless, is there anybody else? If you, if you got your baby, you can bring them. When it wasn't ready for one, when the one was coming. So, um, thank you, Lord. Let me read this first, and then I'm going to ask them to come. Okay. <clears throat> when the children were blessed, <clears throat> excuse me, it left an imprint of God's touch and benefit on their lives. The word bless is more than a religious term or cliche. To bless is to endue with power for success, prosperity, longevity, productivity, and fruitfulness. It's also an impartation of empowerment of God's favor. It is the hand of God on a person's life to support and bring transformation <clears throat> excuse me, to life circumstances. So when we do this baby blessing, we believe by faith that all of these things comes on their lives. So right now at this moment, I want the, the child to come. Well, they can't come by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're here, you have your child with you that, and you didn't plan on doing this, you can bring them too, y'all can come. Hallelujah. <clears throat> My water right there. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to read something to you, then I'm going to let you come up here so everybody can see you. Or maybe I can do it. And... Hey, girl. She got a look on her like, I, I'm, I know I'm blessed. That's how them new, these new millennial babies, they come up here with an attitude. In a good way. <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> Hallelujah. Here's what I'm going <clears> to. <throat> Woo. All right. Here's what's about to happen. And y'all were listening really good, right? Okay. And I have a certificate with, with these on with this on here. But there was a the Bible well historian called it the fountainhead blessing in number six where the priest spoke to the uh to bless the whole nation. And it's where I get I take my cue from and it says the Lord bless you and keep you. And so over this baby, it's going to be God's unlimited capacity to prosper her efforts and that his unrestricted power will protect and keep her from anything and everything that would try to bring harm or hurt to her. We're going to put that on her today. He said, the Lord make his face shine upon you, that his glory... <clears throat> See, I get all choked up in front of these beautiful ladies there. <clears throat> His glory will go before you and defend her on every side. Hallelujah. <laughs> and be gracious to you. She'll be blessed with the immeasurable bounty of God's grace, forgiveness, but also his power to live uh, for daily living. Even, even when she makes mistakes. The grace of God will make the mistake proper. That's how good God is. That's what's coming on her. And it says, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you to bless you. The countenance reflects, will reflect on her in such a way that no weapon formed against her will ever prosper. And the goodness of God and the mercy of God will follow her all the days of her life. And then he says, and the Lord gives you peace. 
God will bless her with a multi-dimensional peace that produces wholeness, spirit, soul, and body. Whatever situation, whatever setting she finds her in, whatever path God has for her, there'll be a, a peace that transcends everything and she'll know I'm in the right place at the right time because God is with me. Will y'all stand? Let's, let's change positions because I'm going to lay hands on you. Praise the Lord. Now all the stuff we just said a minute ago <clears throat> while I was sharing. You can come on up if you like. Because you, you, you the grandmamas when they out, I mean when they're on vacation you 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 going to remember this <laughs> oh see you already got it that's that grandma thing there huh all right okay can i hold her okay i'm a, jesus lifted him up that's why we say a 3 and under what we say what we say what we say 3 and under 5 and under what we say we say 5 and under this one Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you are you trying to see somebody? Are you leaning on me? Okay. All right. I want y'all to stretch your hand, and in light of what we said, that's why I wanted to do this at the end because there's faith now, and she's the first baby I've done this with, with this revelation. And so I'm expecting. Father, I thank you right now that your blessing comes upon her in a powerful way. And everything we just spoke manifests from this day forward in ways that are unexplainable. I thank you, Lord God, she'll never, ever go prodigal. She'll always walk in the favor, the peace, and protection of God. No evil shall befall her. No plague comes near her dwelling. In the name of Jesus, if there's anything in her body right now, we command it to leave and never to return. Father, we thank you that, my God, she'll exceed, exceed all, all of the Hoskin girls in a way that will make them proud and that she'll establish a legacy that cannot be destroyed. Father, we thank you. She brings great honor and peace to her parents all the days of her life. And we bless her. We bless you. We bless you in the name of Jesus. And all the people shouted, what? Amen. Woo! Amen. Praise God. You are blessed, baby. Come on, y'all. Let's give our hand. Look at That's for you. That's for you. That's for you. <laughs> oh, all right. Praise God. Thank you so much. Praise God. You, um, we have a glory. It has a certificate for you. And it has some of the, most of the stuff I just said on there. Let's give him another hand. Thank you, Lord. All right, you can be seated. We'll receive our offering, and um, y'all continue to speak that blessing over. I mean, every day. Now, those of you, if your your child may be 51, 